Are we live? We're live. Okay. Good morning, good evening, community, wherever you are in the world. My name is Autumn Pinaloza. I'm head of community for the Americas at the Algorand Foundation. We are so pleased that you all can join us today for the Algorand Foundation Community All Hands Call. This is the May 2022 edition. Joining us today are research fellow Shai Halevi, head of developer programming Joanna Moran, digital marketing manager Ronan Breen, and Algorand Foundation CEO Stacey Warden, who joins us for her first community all hands. So our agenda today includes four key topics. They will be governance, ecosystem funding, developer programming, and events and community updates. There will be a Q&A at the end of the session. We've collected your top questions, okay, via the registration form. We will answer those in order of relevance and popularity. If there's time at the end, we will open up the questions tab. If we do this, please remember to keep the questions to the, to the topics at hand. Though we will have a full hour for this call, our goal is to stay under 45 minutes out of respect for our community's precious time. So without further ado, Stacy, I will turn it over to you for governance. Stacey, you're on mute. Uh, Ronan, do you want to put the agenda up? Okay, so what I will do first is I will I'll talk a little bit about the context behind the governance vote, and then my colleague Shai will go into the mechanics of the vote a little bit more and give a bit more detail and granularity around it. And then I'll come back and I'll talk broadly about how we were thinking about uh, ecosystem funding and some strategic shifts that we've made there. And then uh, my colleague Joanna will uh, talk about some of the detail there and then roll into uh, developer uh, programming. And then Autumn, I think you are, you are both maybe uh, closing with uh, events and community updates. Okay, so as you know, we have just uh, had uh, put forward another uh, community vote for governance. And uh, what I wanted to do, and what we wanted to do more broadly on this call is to just talk about that vote and what we were thinking about it and how, and the context in which uh, we made the decision to put this vote to the community. And, you know, for us, it was, you know, as you know, sort of in the history of this is that we started out by giving participation rewards to the community. And then because we want the community to participate actively, this is very much part of Silvio's initial vision for Algorand, right, that there would be civic participation in this community, we stepped that up a notch and um, stopped giving rewards for, you know, quote unquote participation and started giving rewards for governance. And so we wanted to reward um, a commitment to this protocol. And so that, that commitment, as you very well know, was to lock your algos for three months and to participate in governance voting as part of our sort of path to decentralization for the protocol as a whole. Well, we got to thinking about this and realized that um, this is only one way to be a good citizen of this community. Other ways to participate actively in this community are to participate in DeFi, uh, to be a creator, to run nodes of various kinds. I mean, there's just very many ways that you can be an active participant in this community. And we came to the conclusion or the idea that we should count this kind of participation as well and count you guys that participate in DeFi for this particular vote. And we'll try to roll out some more as we go forward, but that we should count participation in the DeFi as a governor. That's the that's the vote before you to, to, to broaden the aperture of what we consider a governor to include those that participate actively in, in DeFi. Now, it's very important for me to say that this is not a call for community members to participate in DeFi. You should only invest in what you feel comfortable with and you should only invest money that you know that, that you're not going to worry about losing. And this is not, you know, financial advice, et cetera, et cetera. But we wanted to, you know, acknowledge that uh, participation and also put some burden of, of, of voting on, the, on, on DeFi participants as well. So that's the, that's the vote before you. And it's uh, two parts, one, that you will automatically be enrolled in governance rewards, and two, that DeFi participation will get twice the votes, not twice the rewards per algo, but twice twice the votes. And why is that? And I'll just say a couple of uh, words about that and before I hand it over to Shai. 
we have, and we are grateful for uh, institutional participation in the Algorand protocol. So we have institutional investors and we have institutional investors that have been with us since the early days and that have made really frankly, the development of this protocol possible. However, those large institutional investors, they have a lot of weight in governance voting and they tend not to participate in DeFi. They're conservative institutional investors. The DeFi investors tend to be uh, more household investors, we call them retail investors. And so the idea of giving DeFi participants um, two votes instead of one is kind of twofold. One, it acknowledges a little bit more of an active participation because you're, you know, if you're in DeFi, you're kind of in it a, very, a bit more actively than just locking up your, your algo. But secondly, it, it helps tip the scales a little bit in favor of smaller investors and away from a larger institutional investors who have kind of a an outsized weighting in the in the voting as it stands now. So it's a little bit of a way to kind of rebalance that. Uh, so that's the thinking behind it. And let me turn it to my colleague Shai, who's really, you know, the one of the important brains behind all of this, especially as it gets technical and the details. The devil is in the details, of course. So Shai, let me let me uh, go hand it to you. Thank you, Stacy. Um... If you can move to the next slide. Uh, so, right. So this is the measure that uh, Stacy was talking about, uh, adding uh, decentralized finance as one more sector uh, in our governance. Uh, let me just read the text real quick, and then I'll go through some of the details of how this was structured and why we did it this way. Uh, so we put two options. Option B is just keep the current state. Option A is granting governance status and twice the voting power to qualify DeFi projects whilst maintaining the same governance rewards program to algo holders that commit for the governance period. Uh, so this is the, um, um, th this is the measure that uh, Stacy was talking about. If you can move to the next slide, I'll talk a little bit about the details of it. But before I talk about the details, let me just convey to you the reason we structure it this way. And the number one reason is a sense of urgency. We need to start having our DeFi participate in a bigger way in Algorand, and we need it now. Uh, at the current point of time, blockchains in general, and definitely Algorand as well, need a very lively uh, uh, DeFi uh, scene and part of it is making sure that we both give the decision power and the rewards to DeFi uh, participants. Um, can you move to the next slide? Good. So one thing that uh, that means is if we need a system that we can roll in already in the next quarter, the next, the current, the vote will be June 1 through 15. And by July 1, if this vote, if this measure passes, we need a system that we can start using. That means that we don't have time for uh, building elaborate systems for measuring who is a DeFi participant and who is not. Uh, instead, for now, we will just delegate it to TVL. And right now, the, uh, you know, the, the source that everybody uses for measuring TVL is DeFi Lama. So for the next quarter, we will also use uh, DeFi Lama and their TVL measure as our source of who is a DeFi project and how big are those DeFi projects. Again, we are not married to them, but we do need a system that we can use now, and they are that system for now. We are very open to changing that in the future as we find better ways. Uh, another part of this, uh, uh, um, these rules is that you need more, a project needs more than 10 million total value locked to be eligible to participate in governance. Uh, the reason for that is that we need uh, our governance to be run by grown-ups. Uh, you need to be a grown-up before you can vote. Uh, this is our way of saying what is a grown-up project. 
Uh, it does not mean that we do not support uh, fledging new projects. We do support them. We have other ways of supporting them. But to get the responsibility and the rewards for governance program, you need to be a grown-up project. Uh, Stacy talked about the fact that we're giving them uh, double the voting power, but not double the rewards. Again, the, the thing is they are investing a lot. They need to have double. Part of the uh, we need something to implement now is we give the voting and the rewards to the projects themselves. It's their job to use it to uh, collect their users' preferences and vote on their behalf if they can. Uh, and definitely distribute the rewards to their uh, users. Um, this is part of both decentralization. Uh, a user would choose to go to a DeFi project, potentially also based on the rules of that DeFi project, whether they let them vote or not, how they distribute the rewards, etc. Uh, and also because we cannot build ourselves the, pro uh, the infrastructure to track every user of every project. It is the project's role to do that. Uh, so this is why we structure the, um, the um, uh, thing the way we want. I just want to say one more thing about the double the voting power. And this is this. Uh, we may, if this measure passed, we may use similar tools to give voting powers to other sectors that we think should have more of a say. Of course, it will always be the case that whenever we change the governance rules, the current governors will have to approve that change before it happens. That's it. The second uh, measure that uh, Stacy didn't mention, but I want to uh, very briefly go over, is the expert governors, the exco. So in the previous voting uh, session, we approved in principle the uh, opening uh, the floor for ex-governors that can promote measures to a vote. And this time we uh, give a little more details of how we think this would happen. And the way it would happen is we will set up a system for everybody to propose measures. Uh, the ex-govs will have the power to take some of these proposals and put them on the next ballot. This is more or less the way it happens. Uh, there is uh, the, the, is a lot of uh, more details of our thoughts of how this system will work um, off of our uh, web page. Uh, if you go to the measure in our governance uh, dashboard, there is a link there. Uh, but overall, it would be this way. Uh, it's a four-step process. Everybody can propose. The, uh, then the proposal, there is a, a like mechanism that's supposed to draw the attention of the ex-govs to more interesting proposals, then the ex gov vote on it, and at the end, it is brought to, commun to a community vote, to the governance vote, subject to editing just because uh, we are an organization that uh, needs to uh, adhere to its own rules. So we need to make sure that whatever proposal is doesn't send me personally all the money in Algorand, for example. Uh, but that's it. And that's, yeah, that's all I wanted to say about governance. Excellent. Thank you, Shai. Thank you, Stacy. And actually, I think Stacy is going to now run through some very important recent changes to our ecosystem funding structure. So Stacy, take it away. Thanks. I've just been um, cruising a little bit through these comments and I've got Brazil, Japan, Netherlands, London, Chicago, San Diego, Austin. Um, I'm sure I've forgotten a lot of people. I'm sorry in advance, but it's pretty amazing uh, how many people are from all over the place on this call. So thank you guys so much again for, for dialing in. We really appreciate it. Um, so, so this change to governance, which I think is a, a good evolution towards decentralization, and again, you know, the, the foundation encourages you to, to vote accordingly, um, is one of the big uh, decisions that we've made, strategic decisions that we've made uh, this year. Uh, a second is to orient the uh, activities and the team at the Algorand Foundation much more along the lines of, of vertical. So people will have vertical specialties and they'll be responsible for being out on the ground, um, uh, developing business, listening to the community, being uh, being experts 
et cetera, in their in their areas. And so we've now we've started with a couple of uh, you know I think very obvious areas that we're going to try to really make an impact in, and that's uh, the Def DeFi, NFTs, uh, gaming, and and uh, and impact and uh, inclusion. And so we. Uh, we we will encourage you to interact with us along these vertical lines because that's where the expertise will lie. So that's kind of the 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 forward thinking kind of uh, prioritization of how we are organizing ourselves internally. What that comes with, though, is a sense that we will be funding projects along these verticals, which which makes sense, right? And the way that we used to do it is we used to have a, a, a link on the website and you would submit a project for a grant and we would take, you know, we had four or five people doing this. We would have to go through all of these applications and we would, we would give out grants and we would give out grants that tended to be pretty small actually. And we spent a lot of time um, accessing uh, and reading incoming um, applications. And so, what we are doing now with this grant program is we are going to be giving fewer grants and we are going to be giving larger uh, larger funding, which is much going to be much more partnership funding. So we will be maybe have a grant component to it, have an uh, investment component to it, have an opportunity to participate in future rounds, that kind of thing. So it'll be it'll be um, a step towards the foundation really becoming an investment and an ecosystem partner with projects through through their life cycle so that we're kind of there for you um, through through the life cycle and we will of course still have smaller grants for developers and you know if you went a hackathon and that kind of thing um, and we will also have grant components to our investment profile but we are really trying to get out of the business of of taking incoming grants from everywhere and more in the business of working cooperatively with ecosystem partners and and opportunities that come out of our development developer programs of course to crafting a partnership that is a little bit more robust and a little bit bigger and a little bit more directed in these verticals and so that you when you interface with the foundation as well you've got a bit more of um a, a, a like a business head that has expertise in that area and that is really going to be there for you uh as as you need them so maybe I'll, I'll stop right there and I'll turn that to Joe, who will um, fill in anything I've missed and kind of t take it forward in terms of our, our developer programs. Yeah, thanks, Stacey. Hi, everyone. I'm Joanna. Um, I'm based in Dublin um, and I'm head of uh, developer outreach programs. So what that means is any kind of programs that we have um, externally. So we have lots of partners around the world globally. We've got uh, Tribe in Singapore, um, Xfinite in India. We've got Encode, which some of you are familiar with, um, and some exciting internal programs um, that we're uh, about to launch. So stay tuned at ABM if anyone um, wants to join in. Um, we, we're streaming it. Um, so there'll be some exciting announcements there. Um, but just back to what Stacey was saying. So it's, it's, it's my job to to make sure that there are those programs um, that you mentioned um, so that developers can really start um, grassroots developers can get start like you know ideating great ideas and building them over the course of a hackathon um, or they might uh, developers might want to jump on through um, boot camps for instance um, uh, encode have just uh, d d uh, just closed their uh, boot camp there on Friday so we're seeing lots of interaction with developers um, uh, Autumn, would you mind just going to the next slide and then we'll go back to this one, please. So, um, okay, so we have, uh, um, we have like kind of um, numbers to share with you. Like, so for Discord, for instance, um, like we've seen an 11X increase um, of Discord users and developers in uh, the last 12 months and, um, and also on uh, Reddit as well. So we've seen a 25X increase um, of developer inc of, uh, developer engagement with us. Um, in the last uh, you know six months alone, we've had 2,000 developers engage with us through various different hackathons. Um, so Hack Algo just um, ended on Gitcoin. We just did Activate and Wormhole um, last weekend. We saw amazing projects coming out of that, really strong teams. Um, and also through the um, bounty hacks that we're doing with Reach um, and the women who code. So there's loads of um, exciting um, hackathons and th that just gives you a flavor of like the numbers um, of, 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 you know, the types of um, hackathons that we're involved in. 
So loads happening. Um, Autumn, would you mind just going to the previous slide? So um, also, you know, just uh, in relation to our approach to the grants. So we, um, like late in 2021, we decided to spin up super grants. And that was our approach to do um, an RFP approach to um, developers, uh, I guess kind of high potential developers to come on board and, and support us with projects that we really felt that was necessary to like spin up on, on the Algorand protocol. So for instance, we needed bridges or we needed oracles. Um, EVM compatibility was one that we launched at Denver um, and dev tooling, which is uh, the current open super grant. So just to give you an update on the bridges, um, we had like 20 applications, really strong applications, and we whittled it down to about seven um, projects um, who've been working away for the last couple of months. And we're really excited because bridging season is just about to open on Algorand and we're really excited about that. So you're going to see like, uh, you know, announcements coming out like Messina, for instance, and there's a couple more um, announcing at AVM. So again, stay tuned. Um, we have uh, two articles, um, Algoracle, um, I'm not sure if some of you on the call big shout out to them and Telor also um, and the EVM compatibility is just in review um, along with the dev tooling so as um, as projects get funded here through super grants um, we will uh, be updating you through our socials awesome thanks Joe that was great. Okay, so we are here at community. Hold on, let me get back to my uh, excellent community updates and events. Okay, so uh, for those of you just joining, again, my name is Autumn Penaloza. I'm head of community for the Americas for the foundation. Um, this is a really big year of tentpole events for the Algorand Foundation. Uh, kicking off just in June, uh, we'll have Blockchain Ireland Week in Dublin. Um, then in the U.S., leading up to CoinDesk Consensus, we'll have the AVM Roadshow in Austin. So you probably have seen a lot of this, uh, a lot of tweets and things going on on socials about this. But the AVM Roadshow, guys, is going to be an Algorand-owned, developer-focused ecosystem spotlight day. Well-produced. It's going to be a full day of great content and activations uh, geared specifically to the developer community. Um, It'll be the first of three global AVM Roadshow events with really exciting announcements and program launches that you won't want to miss. So we hope you can join us. And then following on later in the month in June, we have NFT NYC with a full lineup of six events across four days in New York City, um, highlighting some of our most exciting NFT creator community projects. Um, we will have the help of some amazing strategic partners like Art Republic and Startup Boost and New York City Blockchain Club. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be a really full event. I know we'll see a lot of you there. And for our women in Web3 out there, we have two special events lined up just for you. Um, at both AVM Austin and at NFT NYC, uh, the foundation will host two more rounds of The Breakfast Club, which is a female-focused event series we launched at ETH Denver with the goal of bringing more women into the Algorand ecosystem to share all of the amazing opportunities and good vibes that we have going on. Um, so last but not least, applications are open, gang, for the second cohort of the Algorand Miami Accelerator. The first cohort was one of our most successful to date, um, a very well-funded group of teams. And so we're really excited to see who emerges for this next round. So please spread the word on that if you know any great startups that are looking for their layer one tech partner. Um, you can find registration links for all of these events on our fancy brand new events page, which I hope you have all seen by now. Um, we hope you like it as much as we do. The best part about this new page is that you all are invited to share your algorithm uh, related events as well through a link that you'll find on that website. So. <clears throat> Great, and so then, um, so that wraps up events. Just moving on to a couple, a couple updates from the community team. I'm sh thank you all for your warm welcomes to our, our new foundation community managers, uh, Fred Estante in Brazil, and Adriana Bellotti in Australia. Our community team has been very busy, growing, expanding. We're really looking to just create a year of opportunity 
and engagement for everyone. Um, we've added new community champions globally. We will continue to add more. Um, you'll probably notice that uh, Algorand Brazil has launched new social media channels as well as weekly Twitter spaces dedicated to uh, the Brazil and Portuguese speaking communities. So just look for a lot more from the community team uh, this coming year, including in a couple of months, the launch of Community Program 2.0, which the details of which I will save for our next all hands call, but we are cooking up and working very hard to give you all um, all of the love and opportunity for engagement that you deserve. So thank you so much. That wraps up the community updates. Um, yeah, so I think that now we can move probably to the Q&A portion. We should give a good amount of time for that because we have some solid meaty questions to go through. So thanks, Adam. Lynn, would you like to take over for questions? I will indeed. Um, yeah. We've had um, quite a level of questions being asked by the, the registrant, so thank you to the community um, for submitting your questions related to the topics of today's event. Um, I'm going to go through them now. Um, so the first question relates to governance, and this was asked actually a couple of times in, in, in various different ways, but what are the goals for Algorand community governance? Is this Stacy? Sorry, yes, that one's for Stacy. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, I so you know the goals for governance are, I think, as Silvio has uh, laid out in the you know as he when he was first uh, forming the protocol, and as I talked about a little bit in my remarks today, is that we we have a a philosophy of civic engagement on this protocol. Right. So, for example, famously, we don't we don't pay for consensus. Right. We don't pay for participation in consensus. We have an idea that is kind of a part of the bedrock of our community that you should participate and that you should have a, some some kind of civic duty for being a part of this protocol. And so governance is an outgrowth of that. The participation of rewards were not particularly participatory, actually. And so we are now giving governance rewards for for governors. And the way that you can be a governor is to is to participate again in this ecosystem. I feel like I'm repeating myself a little bit, but you know it is part of our long-term vision of of the community being the protocol and more decentralization of uh, important decisions and a more um, a decentralized um, engagement. I would say, and so those are. You know, those always have been the goals for community governance, and they continue to be. Great. Thanks, Stacey. Um, what will be the most beneficial way to use governance throughout all the options available on Algorand? Um, that question submitted, I, I read in between the lines, I think this question reads around the commitment through the traditional governance portal um, that was part of period one and period two, and then the introduction of alternative options to, to governance being liquid governance, um, the DeFi options provided by AlgoFi, Guard, and Folks Finance. Um, so what would be the most beneficial way um, for users to engage, be it through the traditional method or through the newer alternatives? Um, I, that's for well, sure. Well, 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 Ronan, as you know, we don't give investment advice of any kind. So we are absolutely not going to make a statement about what users should do. They should participate in the way that they feel is most comfortable for themselves. Great. Um, can you explain how XGov tokens, I assume rewards here, will be allocated? Will this allocation be up for a vote to the community um, for shy? So about the XGovs, XGovs do not get any more rewards. XGovs are nothing but regular governors who designate the rewards to go to one of the approved XGov DAOs. Now, we don't have any approved XGov DAOs yet, but we will in 2023, maybe even in 2022. Uh, and once we do, uh, the, on, the way to participate, to be an XGov, is to participate in governance as usual and to designate your DAO, the one that you participate in, as the recipient of your, your benefits. Once you do that, you're an ex-gov. You don't get any more rewards this way, but you do get the extra power of being able to influence which measures will come to a vote. A similar related question, Shai, um, to this topic is, could you shed more light on the XGov selection process? So again, we don't select XGovs. You select yourself by once. We are selecting the, the approved DAOs. 
Uh, there are some rules that would have to apply to that. We haven't completely finalized them. Them we will, and we will let everybody knows what they are. We will work with partners to build these DAOs, to audit their code, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Once those are available to you, you just choose to participate with one of them. The only thing you need to do is make sure that you uh, you participate in governance as usual, and your rewards go to your DAO, and then your DAO will give you the power to vote. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Stacey, a quick question for you, actually, it's came in a couple of times, but can you expand upon the importance of TVL as a metric and why, as a community, should we be focused on TVL? It's not that TVL as a metric, it needs to be focused on. So we're not trying to say, to make sure that we, we put a number on the board. We are trying to have a vibrant ecosystem and a vibrant ecosystem means having a lot of TVL because TVL is how you participate in an ecosystem, you lock your algos and in that way you can either let somebody borrow against them or you can borrow against them or you can put them up to in a liquidity pool or you can put them up for tra as trading pairs. I mean, this is all part and parcel of participating in a DeFi ecosystem. And so as our DeFi ecosystem gets bigger and more robust and more diverse, then that, the consequence of that will be that we will have more TVL in the ecosystem. So I think it's maybe a subtle distinction that I'm making, but it's not that we're chasing a number per se. We are we are looking for the biggest kind of uh, community and activity that we can on Algorand, and that will uh, lead us to higher TVL numbers, of course. Thank you. And that's a nice um, precursor for how is measure one meant to increase TVL on Algorand? Um, so the first voting measure, how is that meant to increase TVL? That came in a few times from different registrants. Well, I think it's pretty obvious. Honestly, we're giving governance rewards for your participation in TVL. So that is how we plan to encourage your participation in TVL. Reward, Re not encourage, but reward uh, through governance rewards, your your participation um, in, in the DeFi ecosystem. Perfect. Um, could we explain why we have moved away from the one algo equals one vote principle um, with, with measure um, for shy? So Stacy touched on it uh, when she, in her uh, opening comments. Uh, we just generally feel that the uh, the scene of governance was skewed toward big institutional investors, uh, and that people that participate in DeFi were you know shortchanged in some way, and we're trying to fix that. Uh, it's very simple, uh, and that's. That's sort of our principle is to try to balance the different sectors that are interested in Algorand. And right now our view that it was skewed against DeFi, so we're trying to compensate for that. This may change in the future or not, I don't know. Uh, but this is the reason we don't hold um, religiously to the one algo, one vote in our governance. governance. Thank you, Shai. Um, whichever way the vote goes, can we still have the option to do governance the way we do it now? So for yes. passive, yeah, perfect. Um, this is a question related to eligibility criteria for DeFi projects. So besides the 10 million TVL, is DAO membership required for XGOVs as well? No, these are two completely separate things. XGOVs is one thing, DeFi is another. Perfect. Um, I think Shai touched on this. So when will the vote on the proposed voting measures be available? It runs from June 1st to June 15th. Um, and that's Singapore time as well, just, just to note. Um, with two voting measures now included as part of period three of governance, um, will voting be done through one or two zero algo, algo transactions? Just a single one. I mean, when if you use the dashboard, you'll have to... Uh buttons to check, but it will generate a single transaction specifying both your votes. Perfect. Um, how does the foundation plan to prevent creation of a DeFi lobby overtaking the governance if uh, measure one of period three passes? So if the measure passes, DeFi could gain more power than the other governors leading to, to, leading to them overtaking governance and accepting measures that benefit only DeFi and not other parts of the ecosystem. Um, well, I don't know if Stacy wants to add to that. I mean, I said it before, our goal is to balance between the different sectors that are interested in, in uh, uh, Algorand. Right now, DeFi, DeFi is sort of 
I, I don't want to say discriminated against, but was not given the power that it deserves. Uh, we're trying to fix that. Right now, it doesn't seem like there is any risk of it growing so much that it would overwhelm the other sectors. By the way, if it does, I'm guessing we will all be very happy for the lively DeFi scene that we have on our grant. Uh, but it doesn't seem that in the immediate uh, future any risk like that would happen. If it does, we will try to rebalance it again. And again, always the current governors will approve the uh, change of rules for the next one. Perfect. Yeah, and I would just add that, you know, as I said in my opening remarks, this is a first step. So we have, you know, we recognize different kinds of participation in this ecosystem as governors. And so you can imagine that there are other kinds of ways of participating that should be called governors as well. And we will think hard about that and bring those ideas to the community as well. Perfect. Um, will DApps like Algofy, Guard and Folks Finance need to restructure, restructure pardon me, their governance models? Now? No, the answer is no. I mean, for the next uh, governance period, there would be no change from their point of view. They will have to tell us, you know, who they are. Like every other DeFi project, they're going to have to somehow tell us about themselves so that they can participate in governance. And we will publish these technical rules later on if the me measure passes, but they won't have to change anything about their smart contracts or anything like that. We do have a long-term plan of bringing more of our governance on chain when if and when that happens uh yeah maybe the uh DeFi project will have to adjust to that perfect um that's the majority autumn unless you've seen any in the chat that's the majority sorry related to governance um i think we had one or two earmarked um are DeFi platforms required to be transparent with their votes and to end users um or is this entirely up to the platform to decide how transparent they they want to be so on this thing, we opt for decentralization. We don't require anything from them. We will monitor. If we find a project that acts in particularly bad faith, maybe we will do something about it. But it's the same as us supporting DeFi projects now through other programs. We have other pro programs, DeFi projects get new things. If they don't use their funds in the way that's consistent with the intention of that program, they will stop getting them. So it would be similar for governance, I believe. Uh, for platforms like Guard or Algofy, will governors now get two times the governance rewards? Actually, yes. And that's, uh, I view that as a feature rather than a bug. Uh, you both participate in DeFi and you commit for three months, you should get twice the rewards. So yes, you should get twice the reward and you will have one vote on your own and your project will vote presumably on your behalf with two more. So in some sense, you have three times the voting power in this, in this arrangement. Perfect. Um, I'll move on to some grant and ecosystem funding related questions. Um, will the Algrand Foundation develop a more decentralized grant system like Catalyst and Cardano in the future? I think that's an open question. Yeah. I am not familiar with the Cardano system, so we can't answer, but we right now are um, I think we are thinking about how to prioritize for the health of the ecosystem. Um, I think our our XGov um, solution will be a bit of decentralization there, of course, because then the community will be able to propose projects. The ex governors will be able to upvote those projects for community votes. So that's a very important part of of thinking about what projects could go forward to be considered for ecosystem for for foundation funding more broadly. I'll, I just wanted to just chime in there. Um, we also launched um, grants through Gitcoin also. Um, and so we, we participated in grants around 13 um, on Gitcoin um, and I think 12 projects were funded. This was our first kind of like, just jump into it. We were testing it to see how it all worked. Um, and it does, and we will be participating in grants round 14 also. So that is an opportunity for community and ecosystem to um, uh, fund um, through quad quadratic funding um, on Gitcoin. Lovely. Thanks, Joanna. Um, we have a grant currently with the Algrand Foundation. Does the program closure impact us? Th this came in in a couple of different ways. Like, so is there any implications for grants that have been awarded? Um, 
with the closure of, of the with the now closure of the program. Sorry. We are not in the habit of uh, awarding grants and then taking them away from you once they have been awarded to you. So don't don't worry about that. We have a number of active grants. Um, this is just a way of just prioritizing and organizing ourselves uh, for maximum imp impact. That's all this is. Perfect. Um, and do existing grant winners have the opportunity to receive further funding? Um, I, I would sort of just touch base uh, on what was presented earlier, which was the contact emails um, for you to send through um, any any proposals to, to the email addresses that were listed. Um, is ecosystem funding only available to developers? And this actually came in a few times. No. Um, like so, so for instance, like um, we'll come across a lot of like developers through the hackathons, right? And that's where ideas um, are, are you know seeded um, and supported. And then I guess it's the high potential projects um, where the ecosystem leads will start to engage with those high potential projects, and then they will go on to uh, receive ecosystem funding. Uh, from us so i guess it's kind of the, the high the highest potential potential projects are the ones that will get funded they might necessarily be they sometimes they might be founded by a developer and sometimes um they may not they might be a fintech um who's moved into web3 or wh whatever that might be trad into into into, into web3 um so not necessarily great um, as grant winners very close to launch how can we contact al grant for equity investment um, and as I said earlier, just please email e ecofunding at algrand.foundation, include a pitch deck uh, and a summary of the round terms. Uh, unless anybody has anything additional to add, I'll move on to the next question. Um, how does the eco funding system work and what is the process? Um, so I think um, Stacey had obviously touched on that. Um, the new process relies on nominations, so trusted partners within the ecosystem, such as Borderless, Algrand Inc., along with foundation staff and vertical leads who will source and assess the projects and seek funding. Um, projects should be referred internally or reviewed and voted upon in bi-weekly funding committees that acts on the recommendations of vertical leads. Um, so if you haven't been referred, you can contact um, the team um, and as I said, I'll drop it into the chat um, on our website. There's a list of all the different um, contact email addresses that you can use to to reach out. But I just want to build on that, Ronan, as well. Yep. You know, like we do, um, I guess, kind of recommend you know budding developers who um, want to you know take a leap into entrepreneurship. Um, so they might participate in a hack and they might go on to an accelerator. But um, you know, you we would like you to start building relationship with those ecosystem leads. This will become their hunting ground. You know, they will start to build relationships with you early on. And I would recommend that you you know jump in at that stage. Um, is you know same with any kind of VC investment or uh, any kind of funding. You know, it's all about building a relationship with those investors. And uh, you know, that that is how we would like um, this to play out with our ecosystem leads also. Ronan, can you put the slide of the contact information up instead of just the question slide? Um, I'll move on to sort of community and events. So are there any big Algorand events organized or coming next? Um, I might give that to you, Joe. Um, yes, so um, AVM. Um, is a developer focused event uh, that is taking place on June 8th. Um, we're re like really excited about the content. We have uh, first off kicking it off with a you know, women's breakfast in the morning. Um, and then we're gonna get a download um, from the AVM team um, at the Inc about you know the gift that keeps on giving AVM. Um, and then there'll be um, our ecosystem partners will then be doing pitches to you, uh, the developers, about what's upcoming in our ecosystem. And um, so they'll be pitching to you and um, trying to entice you to come on board and jump in with Al Grant. Um, and then the afternoon will be, um, you know, a series of. Um, panels about DeFi, NFT creators. We've got some really cool speakers coming up and where as speakers are um, jumping in, we are we, we'll be updating our AVM. Um, website and um, so yeah just just stay tuned on that on the website all the information will be on the website I'll share the link as well here lovely Um autumn this one's for you what is something you wish you saw more from the community top three ways the community can help 
<sighs> Holy cow, that's a great question. Um, you know, I what we're really looking for right now is is kind of regional awareness. Um, so I would say flag your if you are someone who is interested in hosting an event, you know, grabbing 20 friends who are interested in crypto and going to pizza, um, anything of that nature, reach out to me. We're looking for representatives for, you know, um, evangelists um, all over the globe, really. So uh, just don't be afraid to reach out. And do know that I mean what I say with this community 2.0 coming, uh, we will have a lot more opportunities, structured, scalable opportunities for you all to participate and be rewarded for your enthusiasm. So stay tuned. Thank you. Um, can the Algram Foundation create a public calendar of sorts with clear, concise dates, um, including defile goal deadlines? Um, from an events perspective, I think the Adam and Joe have also touched there on the, the new events page. In terms of DeFi specific, um, Stacey, keep me honest, but you know, I assume the community would have to follow um, the DeFi updates from the DeFi options available directly, um, as opposed to the foundation sharing that information. I'm not sure I understood that, but um, sure. Developers, um, will the foundation be focused on mobile developers in the future? Joanna, that's for you. Sorry, will sorry, will we be focused on on mobile developers in the future? Yep. We're going to be talking to all developers. Perfect. <laughs> developers, developers, developers. <laughs> You've got a good idea. Jump in with Algorand. We will support you and we are improving at every moment uh, that we can. We are, uh, you know, coming up with ways and new ways to support you. We're listening to you. Um, so bear with us. Um, but, you know, um, we'll be launching office hours as well um, for our de um, for our developers um, also in the coming days. So stay tuned also. A general question, what technologies or applications does, Alg does the Algorand protocol most need to thrive? Um, it's an open question. And Sorry, Google one that. Repeat that again, please. Sorry, what technologies or applications does, Al does the Algorand protocol most need to thrive? It's not the protocol, it's the ecosystem, right? So the protocol is a piece of technology. It's the best technology in crypto. And we and the protocol itself has the features that everybody on this call is, is quite well aware of. It does over a thousand transactions per second. So moving to 10,000 transactions per second, we settle in 4.5 seconds. We, we will soon settle in 2.5 seconds. We have a very light carbon footprint of about seven houses. Um, and so, we the 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 protocol itself has a has a, a a pipeline of additional features. You know, as long as your arm as it keeps kind of upgrading and upgrading things that you've heard about state proofs and and um, increased uh, transaction speeds and the like. The ecosystem itself needs to um, organically and with our help, you know, prioritizing where we see where we see activity that doesn't take place, it needs to pl take place in a number of different ways. And if you look at other ecosystems, they have things that we don't yet have, or they have five where we have two, right? But this is a very organic process that kind of needs to come from the ground from the ground up. And we have so much going on now. We have so many projects that are now in the audit process. We are, there are so many products now on testnet that are moving to, to mainnet. So we are going to see a Cambrian explosion of different projects and platforms on this in this ecosystem, on this protocol. And the thing about the Algorand protocol is that enables you to scale. We can keep up with you. We can keep up with you as your project gets bigger, and we can keep up as the number of projects multiply on the protocol. So we're ready. You mentioned state proof, Stacey, and a, a couple of the registrants had asked um, any exclusives around when they'll be available on DevNet, TestNet, or possibly Mainnet? They have already put the um, the Falcon keys, the keys that are needed. They're sort of a post-quantum secure keys that are required. And my understanding is that that was a pretty uh, difficult hurdle to get through. And so those are already now out on TestNet. 
And so it's a process from there to roll from test net to main net. And we, uh, you have, uh, I don't have any particular insight into this, but they, that uh, published timeline is not slipping. So it's in kind of Q3, Q2, Q3 that they, that they're going to keep um, being able, that they'll be able to roll this out. Lovely. Um, Joe, I'm going to ask you this one. Can we have an update on any EVM compatibility in the London Bridge project? Um, any yes. Updates? So um, under the bridges, um, there's going to be a couple of announcements uh, coming out in the next two weeks. Um, and uh, yeah, they will be around some aforementioned projects. Um, EVM compatibility, um, there are uh, two forerunners, um, and we hope to make that announcement also at AVM. Lovely. Um, Autumn, um, in which continent will the next Decipher event be? Any exclusives for, for people that obviously attended or were interested in attending last year? Uh, pleading the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, well, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's most of the pre-submitted questions that we've collated that I'm just trying to see if there's any. Did you notice any in the chat, Autumn, that I, I sorry, while I was busy doing the questions, did anything pop in? Um, there's, there's a question here on, on, on nodes. Um, sorry, just there. Just I'll, I'll delegate that to Shai. Sorry, yeah. I, I haven't seen the question, but. What was the question? So who should uh, I get in touch with to help incentivizing the creation of new nodes? We are rolling programs out every so often, more than once or twice a year related to running various types of nodes and we intend to keep doing that. Uh, we would be happy to get ideas of more programs like that and for that, just, you know, access any of the normal Algorand Foundation uh, channels, uh, and it will get, I mean, eventually it will get to me or other people that are dealing with the uh, technical stuff, uh, and it will go into our next programs. But if you want, I mean, you can send me an email if you want to talk to me spe specifically, but uh, generally just, you know, uh, reach for the, the normal Algorand Foundation uh, contact channels. Um, Otto, I'm trolling through. I don't see any others. Did you catch any I've missed? I don't think so. And we're we're coming up on the on the hour, and I promise we do our best to keep it under. So I think I think that we can uh, we can wrap this up. If our speakers would like to drop your Twitter handles in the chat so that everyone can be found. Thank you all. So thank you all so much for joining everyone in the community. Uh, we are grateful for you. We are working hard for you and um, more great things to come. So stay tuned. Thank you again. And we'll see you on the next one. Yeah. See you next time. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. The session is recorded automatically. So the minute the event finishes, you'll receive the recording um, on demand to, to watch at your at your pleasure. Thank you.